Ah, that's a very good question. Does it still exist? Okay. Um, well, the word Hindutva was started, well, maybe longer ago, but to my knowledge in the 1880s in some Bengali newspaper. Uh, at any rate, you know, it, the word existed already. And then in 1923, while in prison, Savarka wrote this book, Hindutva, where he launched it as a political concept. And, you know, there it simply means Hinduness, to be Hindu, the quality of being Hindu. And um, which is a bit of an old construction because Twa is a Sanskrit uh, suffix and Hindu is a non-Sanskrit word, it's Persian. But okay, uh, so the word exists in modern India and um, it effectively means, <clears throat> according to Savarkar himself, it simply means one who has India as his fatherland and as his holy land. So I do not have India as my fatherland. So definitely I'm not a Hindu, no matter whether I consider India my holy land. And, you know, after a day like this, you know, being in the Brahma temple in Varanasi, well, I might, <laughs> I might think so. But um, no, you see, According to that definition, I'm not a Hindu at all. And um, you people may be Hindus, since you have India as your fatherland, but then you may not be if you reject India as your holy land. If you say, no, I'm turning to Mecca, you know, then you're not Hindus. So that was a common sense definition. You see, there are people, um, people in, in, you know, ancient Egypt or in, in uh, you know, I don't know, the Maoris in New Zealand or something who have parallel beliefs, parallel attitudes to the Hindus, but they're still not called Hindu because they're not Indian. Yeah. Okay? So, it's a common sense definition. It's what normally people feel to be a Hindu. Uh, and in fact, the definition has also been taken over in the Indian law systems in the Hindu Marriage Act of 1955, I think, um, there is laid down that this law applies to everybody in India who is not a Parsi, a Christian or a Muslim. So it's a negative definition. It means Indian who believe something except for Islam, Christianity or Zoroastrianism. And, um, you know, it makes sense because to Indians, indeed, it is not important what you believe. You know, you, you can believe anything, but you're still part of the family. And, you know, in order to celebrate Diwali or something, you don't have to believe anything specific. You know, you see these displays of uh, Ganesha and Lakshmi and Saraswati. Well, do you have to believe in those goals? I don't know what belief means, really. You know, they are there and... Uh, you know, even if you're a Shaivite, you will still join in the revelry of Diwali and, and, and so on. You know, I mean, you know, these beliefs are, you know, are a pastime, maybe late at night or early in the morning. But, you know, you don't really care about them so much. And uh, whereas in Christianity or Islam, this, everything depends on this basic belief. If you believe that there is only one God and that Muhammad is, is his prophet, you go to heaven. If you don't believe it, you go to hell. No matter what a good guy you are, you go to hell, bus. And, and so for them, these beliefs are all important. Whereas for Hinduism, well... And so it is perfectly correct that there is this negative definition, you see. Um, so... So, I mean, with, you know, whatever else may be wrong with Savarkar, that's another discussion. But that definition makes good sense. Now, does, you know, and so it became the, you know, rallying cry of what is called Hindu nationalism. Mm -hmm. A movement represented by the Hindu Mahasabha, but that grew out of the Arya Samaj. And, I mean, you don't have to be a member of the Hindu Mahasabha to subscribe to it. Then later the RSS, then later the party that replaced the Hindu Mahasabha, which was the Jan Sang, which has become later the BJP, the party presently in power. 
Now, does it still exist? Well, that's a very good question, because when I see the present or even the, 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 the latest uh, BJP government, I don't see much Hindu Twa, <laughs> frankly. Um, there are some things to do legislatively that are very important for Hinduism, principally abolishing discriminations against Hinduism that now exist. I mean, you may have heard of the case of the Ramakrishna mission uh, that started to... as a Hindu organization with the rallying cry, Gar se kaho ham Hindu hain. Say with pride, we are Hindus. That organization is now saying, or has recently been saying, no, we are not Hindus. We want the privileges of non-Hindus. We want to be a minority because it's advantageous to be a minority. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a burden to be a Hindu. Yes. Okay, now why is that? And, and they're not alone. Huh? The Arya Samaj has done it. The Lingayats are doing it. The Jains are doing it. And sometimes successfully, sometimes not. But at any rate, they are all motivated by the fact that it's dangerous to be Hindu. Like, for instance, the Jains have this... Uh, very um, uh, modern and, and very very good schools, in fact, um, that they want to keep Jain. Now, if they are Hindu, the state can nationalize these schools anytime. And so they want to keep these schools. So if, if the price to pay is to declare yourself a non-Hindu, they will pay that price. Because better that than to have the disadvantages of being Hindu. So, you see, I don't need to explain, you see, the, those organizations themselves are saying and are proving that it is a disadvantage to be a Hindu. Right. Now, that is something for a Hindu Twa government to do something about. Now, the Vajpayee government, plural, have not done anything about it. The Modi government has still not done anything about it. I hear that there is a private bill it's not, not sponsored by the government, but there is one BJP parliamentarian who has entered a bill to uh, change the constitution and to uh, abolish these discriminations. Okay. Of course, I am all for this bill. I think everybody should support it. Yeah, I mean, even as a non-Indian, you know, I look at this bill and I say, well, this, this is obvious. This makes perfect sense. And the present situation is scandalous. Um, but so, you know, everybody who has any stake in it at all should actively support it. But the first to support it should be the BJP. The government itself should say, this is what we are going for. We want equality. They don't even have to say Hindutva. They don't even have to be motivated by Hindutva. Just equality is enough. Yes. You see, just create a level playing field where Hinduism can compete with other religions or can coexist with other religions, because the notion of competition isn't really there in Hinduism, not between religions. There is no such thing as competition between religions. In Christianity and Islam, there is such competition. And so every year, the missionaries, you know, keep their accounts and say, oh, we made so many converts this year, ah, but so many people are apostates. And so, you know, the sum total is we gained this much. Uh, but you see, Hinduism doesn't work that way. So it doesn't try to convert Christians to, to Hinduism. Uh, but anyway, I mean, to coexist between religions, you see, to have harmony between religions, create a level playing field, stop these discriminations.